Heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know whether the media is ready for me, but as I wait for the media to start, okay, good. Praise the Lord! Praise the name of Jesus! I just came back from Abuja. And my trip to Abuja, all paid. The flights, the hotel bill, all paid by a couple who desired healing in their marriage. I got a call. It was a man that called me, the husband, and said he came back after a journey to his house and found out that his wife had moved out everything in the house. She had moved out. Before he traveled, they had some crisis and that he needed counseling and we needed to talk to the wife also. Now, this husband happened to be a pastor. This will be the third, 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 third session I was going to do within a short period of time. My neighbor in the University of Ibadan, right in front of me, the neighbor in front of my house, came to ask me to open my water. And I asked for madame. And he said, Madam, I don't know. My wife said she was going for holiday. I helped to pack her things into the car with the children. Since December, she has refused to come back. That one is the professor. So education, right? I have given one example, religion, the second one at least the professor. Then my friend, I used to be a whole warden in India Hall. I was a whole warden for seven years. When I talked about the effect of domestic violence on children, I probably mentioned a little because I have a first hand experience with adolescents in the hall, in the university. What it does to them. So the person that took over from me, whose husband is a pastor in a popular church, I'm not going to mention it now. The husband came to me and said, your friend left the house with the kids and I do not know where they are. So I put a call to her and I was like, hello Shelly. Why am I hearing getting all of this information? And among, you know, people that are in church, in highly placed, respectable positions in church. What's happening? So I put a portrait to her. Why? Everybody? And she said, no, my sister, it is better to be alive to tell the story than to be dead. And I guess the problem with uh, Osinachi now was like an explosion of the whole thing. So people could actually come out now and talk. Ha! Huh, it's been happening to me. Ha! Huh, this. Ha! Huh, that. You know? So, let me quickly, let's quickly explore and look at. So, when they, uh, I was called by uh, Professor um, Mrs. Buttershaw to do a small write up on domestic violence for the magazine. At this point, I would like to say thank you very much to Mama. Thank you very much. God bless you for giving me that privilege. So I did a right talk within a short time. She was like, I just gave, I gave you this topic just like a day, and then you have it. I said, yes, it's very really easy for me to write because I talk about it, I work with it, and all of that. We organize different programs at, you know, uh, international level and all that. I work with UN women and all of that. So we see these things all the time. They are there. They are there all the time. And let me tell you, domestic violence is not only really against women, it's also against men. Right? It's also against men. It's becoming more against men now. The women know their rights a lot now. 
We know our rights so much now, and that our rights is beginning to become very, very right. I don't know whether I'm making sense. <laughs> so, when they told me, I said, okay, the best thing I'm going to do is to give it a topic, and that is hate comes to Christian home. Hate. Hate. I don't like that thing you're doing. Stop it. I hate it. Don't do that. I don't like this. We say this, we say this to our children, to our husbands, to the people around us. I don't like it. I hate it. I hate it when you talk like that. I hate it when you behave this way. I hate it when you think. I hate it when you that. You just keep hating. And the more we keep saying this hate, hate, hate thing, you see, our minds are, are wonderful. Just like we give our body food to eat, we also feed our minds with the things we say. After some time, we begin to feel the hate. Sometimes even when there's no hate, because you hated the thing so much, you begin to feel the hate. So, can we go for the next slide, please? No. I'll move fast. I'm going to use Bible verses. Um, but, um, yeah. So this talk will, in the course of this discussion, I'm going to make it interactive. In the course of the discussion, we might be touching on some wounds that some people seated in this auditorium would want to, you know, offer. We might be touching on past hurts that people have helped us through, but it's really not going away. Please, if in the course of this talk we do that, kindly forgive us. Because it's an issue that we need to address. Especially now that violence is taking over our country. Violence everywhere. Short temper. We are all short tempered. Our fuse, you know, every little thing, you know, our fuse is very short. Every little thing we are touching, we are annoyed. And then we read meanings to everything. What she is suddenly, but it with a bolly you know. We hear it the way we want to hear it and interpret it the way we want to interpret it. So those who have survived domestic violence, I congratulate you. Who did not die, I congratulate you. And those who are still in it, I pray that the Lord himself will help. But above that, he has created us with two hands, so that we can use our hands to carry our what? To carry ourselves, to help ourselves. With my two hands, I cannot lift myself up. If I need to be lifted up, I will need to call on somebody to lift me up. Please lift me up. I cannot lift myself up. So your hands have been created for something to lift. To lift up. So, what is why is domestic violence or family abuse a problem in our churches today? I will need answers. I heard you discuss this yesterday. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Praise the Lord. The church starts from the nuclear family. And if the nuclear family is not settled, the church cannot be settled. If there is domestic violence in the family, definitely since the family is a first church, it will reflect in the church. Praise the Lord. Wonderful answer. And because of our time, I will not take more. The answer is very correct. Please, can I have the next, next, next slide? And so, to understand why domestic and family violence is a problem in our churches, we must be willing to dialogue about it. We must be able to talk about power. Everybody say power. Everybody say power. 
gender, marriage, and so many other things. Most of all, power. What is power? Power is a, a kind of a hierarchy. A hierarchy. Something that is above the other. Something that is stronger than the other. You have power. For instance, Solomon. I'm going to use you. She, no, Masidama. Yes. She has the power to say, this conference is over. Oh, yeah, everybody, carry your bag and go. Right or wrong? Right? Why? Why? Why does she have that power? She's a leader. She's a leader. So she has the power to do that. I don't want this conference anymore. So, I'm not here about so I'll stumble once in a while. <laughs> but, Moti Kori Ruba, I'm going to be right next to you. She cannot possibly leave. Because she, she has power, she knows her power, and she can use her power. We'll talk about power. And then we'll talk about power, you know, the way God wants us to use our power. Especially when we are in a position to use such power. Please, I need Vidya to look, me, look at me. Thank you. There's something I ask myself. When I was preparing this, I was looking for the word abuse in the Bible. The word abuse, you know. And I suddenly found out that but the term, the word abuse is not there. But rather I saw the term oppression, I mean oppression, you know. And the, part, the Psalms in particular portray oppression in a manner that echoes the way abuse Survivors describe their abusers. His, now, allow me, I was the one that put her, it was his in the Bible. I slashed it with her because I want us to understand properly. His mouth is filled with cursing and deceit and oppression under his or her tongue and mischief and iniquity. When people want to exhibit power, their mouth, the things they say from their mouth, let me not remove myself from it, let me not sit there. The things we say from our mouth, including me, sometimes and most times, in order to make a point, they are quite deceitful. They are quite deceitful. And so, the way of Jesus calls us to relationship of non-violence. They are deceitful. They are deceitful because we want to have and find favor. And in most times, it leads to violence. How do you talk to your children when they offend you? The first thing that comes to your mind is to shout. Get out of there! Get out! What is the difference between get out and leave that place? Get out, leave. Don't touch. Don't touch. I'm saying the same thing, different words. If I catch you, in, what will you do? I know that we've been brought up with these things. And that is where the problem is. We were brought up the traditional way. Most of us seated here. We were brought up, brought up the traditional way. Our mothers were hard on us. And they prepared us basically for the home. Because each time you commit an offense, they reminded you that 
you will do the same in your husband's house. Don't do this. If not, your husband will complain. Is that the way you are going to cook for your husband? Is that the way you are going to dress for your husband? Is that the way you are going to do? clean the house or keep the house, everything is for your husband, for your husband, for your husband. We were brought up for our husbands. And so, our generation, most of the time, and those older than us, were able to succeed in marriage because they were trained and brought up for their husbands. Traditionally, but let me tell you where the crisis is right now. We are now having children, and we are not bringing up our children for their husbands. But we are bringing up children for the society. Because now, the society opened up so many things to women. You can now go to school and get to whatever height you can achieve. And so, if you were in the same class with a boy, a man, and you were given the same opportunity, the same exam, the same everything. Why shouldn't you be allowed to live the way the man is living? Why? Why? You went to the same school, you were given the same opportunities, you wrote the same exam. In fact, you did better than the man or the boy in your class. You did better than them. It's time to settle down or time to, you know, have a job or something. You know, they are telling you, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, you are going to have children. So you have to do this, you have to do that. Crisis. And so she gets back home and she feels wasted after spending so many years in the university. Now I'm back home. I'm being little or nothing. Okay? So, there's confusion, serious confusion. And inside, she's boiling, suffering and smiling, suffering and smiling. And so, you begin to live for the society, you begin to live for the people who see you, because you don't want them to think that, you know, you're a bad wife. You know, so you begin to pretend, even when you're hurting, it usually starts when you feel deprived of your opportunities. I am an engineer for God's sake, and I cannot practice engineering. I am a nurse, and the only people I nurse is my, my, my family. I don't, I don't practice nursing. And I see my husband struggling. And each time I offer to help because of the patriarchal system that we have all about men, you know, his ego is also there to protect. You know, he doesn't want his friends to feel that the wife is taking up responsibilities. And so, say, so, okay, not now. Even if you are going to work, look for something that is not too difficult so that you can look after the children. And so, after studying engineering, you end up maybe in the classroom teaching secondary school students. And each time you enter that class, you enter with vengeance. And you're really not impacting on the children because that is not you what you have been trained for. You are not making an impact. Each time you enter that class, you are not impacting because you are not happy being there. We have a lot of teachers in schools that are not happy and they are transferring that unhappiness to your and my children. You can see, the root is, um, is a long thing, you know. So, what is domestic abuse? It's also called violence or intimate partner violence. It is a pattern of behavior in any relationship that is used to gain or maintain power and control over an intimate partner. Okay? Anybody that is in a violent relationship, be it um, between mother and father, um, siblings, parents and children, one is always a dominant partner and they want to control the other. Some knowingly, some unknowingly, because that is their nature. It is also described as physical, sexual, emotional, economic or psychological actions 
or traits of action that influence another person. I'm sure when you when when you had the discussion yesterday, you must have talked about you know physical violence, sexual violence. Did you do that? Physical violence, sexual violence, economic violence. What is economic violence? I'm a teacher. Let's see whether you pass this morning. What is economic violence? Yes, you again, ma. <laughs> We are blessed one. Praise the Lord. Yeah. In my own opinion, I think economic violence is when the family are in need and the head of your home cannot provide for the needs and the wife is not ready to support despite her high income. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. There's a difference between, thank you ma, for your response, it's wonderful. There's a difference between, okay ma, we have one hand up. I think economic violence is when one is working and is not able to make use of the money herself. It's being controlled by the spouse. I think that is what economic violence is. Thank you very much ma. Any other one? Okay, thank you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Economic violence is, let me, like an example, like maybe it's the woman that is actually working and probably the money that is coming in for that woman, she's not really the one spending it. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. All the answers given are all the answers given are right. They are all right. But let me clear some things. There's a difference between economic hardship and economic violence. Economic hardship is when a family is going through hardship and they cannot provide. It's not like they don't want to, but they are working hard but they are unable to provide for the family. That is economic hardship. Economic violence is the deliberate act to control your spouse's income or monetary value. It is deliberate. I will not give her too much money so that she will not do this, this, and that. I will continue to collect so much money from him. I don't care. Or whatever money she makes must be given to me and I will tell her how to use it. So it is a deliberate act. People do it consciously. They do it consciously. They plan it and they execute it. It is planned and executed. You know that your husband does not earn more than 50,000. And you are demanding for 150,000. And you are insisting on 150,000. Or your husband collects 150,000, he knows that you need 100,000 to run the home, but he gives you 20,000. And does not make provision for the remaining money to come. And so you are struggling forever, and he knows it. Because he knows that when he puts you in penury, you continue to come back to him to demand for more. And so he will feel very important because he's the one giving you the money. The same happens the other way around. And that is, politicians use that a lot. Politicians will starve the masses. They will not give the masses what is due to them. Their rights will not be given to them. And so, during campaign like this, they now start distributing things. You see, because those people have been starved of that thing for a long time, 
when they see it, they are hungry for it. And so that politician becomes important. Becomes important. Ah, oh my dad, eh, that bad job, eh, we got to pay for what? Can you talk? Can you talk? It is your own right that they pay for you. They kept it for you, you know, from you for a long time. At their own time, they now came here. And you are now happy. It's the same thing that happens in a marriage with economic violence. The partner would deliberately, you know, starve the other partner of money or funds and release the funds small, small, so that that partner would depend on them. So the day the partner decides to do shower, so bless me, the wife gets really happy. Fifty thousand, not for four hundred. What they have four hundred thousand? Then they come to church and then they stand still. But that does not remove the heart. That is a one-off thing. After some time, you go back to twenty thousand, and the struggle continues. So domestic violence includes any behavior that. Frightened. If you are in a relationship and you are frightened all the time, can you frighten me, Yoruba? Ma? Yeah, yeah, it's very. It's very good. It's very So when you are in a relationship and we go to one of my baby all the time, to buy you buy? Oh. And that's it, very not only from your spouse. But even from the people around you, because some of you might even have relations. No one they can win. Mother in law, father in law, and all of that. You know, because when we say domestic violence, we are looking at it from a pure domestic setting. And domestic setting is not just the husband and the wife, there are other people in it. In fact, the, the marriage counseling I did in Abuja, by the time I finished counseling them, I found out that. 90% of the problem they have in that marriage is not about the two of them. They love themselves and they understand themselves. But the people around them, they have a lot of people around them. So, this one will come and say choo 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 to the husband. Then, we will say choo 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 to the wife. You know? And then, when they meet, the wife will not tell the husband because she feels, um, the person that gave her that information gave her in confidence. So, who here can suffer? Come up, be me. And it was suffer me only by, 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 not share. So, and by not telling your husband, you are not clarifying things. And it keeps building. One day you just snap. Ah, uh ah, -uh, you know, they know what it for you. Eh? Ah, uh ah, -uh, bye, 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 bye. And then he's like, where did you get all of this information from? Where is this coming from? You have piled it up so much that it explodes. You cannot keep anger bottled up. It will explode. It's a volcano. The day of the volcanic eruption. Oops, look at it quickly. I'll just run now. So, um, domestic violence includes any behavior that intimidates. I've talked about fighting and terrorizing. Intimidate, manipulate, hurt, humiliate. You know, when you're hurting in a, in, 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 in a, a relationship, you know, when you keep blaming, 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 or when they keep blaming you, you know, like that. Injure, wound someone, and all of that. So it is. I was going to have 15 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, have you? Thank you, ma'am. So, the next slide, please. Domestic violence can happen to anyone, any race, any age, religion, gender. It can happen within a range of relationships that is between you and your mother-in-law, you and your father-in-law, 
you and your brother-in-law, you and your sister-in-law, you and your husband, your cousins, anybody within the space you allow. You have your space, right? Whoever, like in a marriage, the marriage is between the husband and the wife. And in the African setting, you are not only marrying the husband or the wife, you are also marrying the family. Am I correct? So if because you have gone to school, you now decide to say, okay, um, I read in one article, you know, that a marriage will succeed only when, because we are reading a lot of things online now. In fact, I tell you, what social media is doing to marriage is right now. We cannot phantom. And it will be worse if we don't take you and if we don't align ourselves with the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. And be grounded in that teaching. So what I read in the social media, eh, your marriage will last longer if eh, it is just you and your husband and your children and nobody else. Anybody that wants to come and see you must call you, must let you know they are coming and all of that. Okay. Okay. On the day of your marriage, you have just asked for only yourself and your husband. You have just taken the two of you to the altar and back. But I remember that in most cases, as we are sitting, our marriages, they are grandiose and marriages with our in-laws around. Our brothers and our sisters and our, you think they came for that marriage for nothing? No. Everybody that attended your marriage is part of your family. You just need wisdom to relate with them. I'm not saying they should come and all live in your house, but you need wisdom to relate with them. The Bible said is get it. Get wisdom, get knowledge and understanding. So we need wisdom. Lord, help us. So it has nothing to do with religion. Because I'm a Christian, there cannot be domestic violence. In fact, like I started, to have it more in the church. Have it more in the church now. The devil is creeping in, creeping in, you know, into the church and breaking homes, breaking homes. Now making people feel that being a Muslim is more, is more better, I mean, better than being a Christian. Because Muslims are more disciplined. Have you, how many of you have heard that before? Yeah. They are more disciplined, they are honest, you give them anything, they do it very well. True, right? Yes? You know, and all of that. It means something went wrong somewhere. So, causes of domestic violence. Individual causes. Individual causes means you. I used to say me, myself, and I. Say more of it. Me, myself, and I. I am going to. You know, I have a lot of causes that I did not add social media there because if we take care of all of the causes that we have there, you also take care of social media. I will dwell on individual determinants more. So I will leave it with individual determinants and go back to the traditional, you know, traditional uh, um, beliefs. We'll go, I will talk about those ones briefly, 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 but I'll dwell on individual determinants. Individual determinants, it means you seated, you, you, me. If there's domestic violence in my home, what is the level of my contribution to that violence? You know, that's what we don't usually think about. This time we do this and we are fighting the same as other people in the house. You are like this. You are like this. And you. And you. And you. Okay, now. How about you? 
Kudanya begitu lagi Kami ini Ajaib Ini this one We struggle with this one you know. It is because of this That a lot of people fight for position Our deeply held internal self Sense of self As male Female A blend of both I will explain this one Or neither Who we internally know ourselves to be I have heard women saying that All of us she mistake you Or Korean Have you heard that before? Yes Awkward. In fact, people around you will call you a man because you know the society has gendered us in such a way that a man is meant to behave in a particular manner and a woman is meant to behave in a particular manner. So if you, as a woman, begin to behave in the manner that looks like a man, they begin to call you a man. Ah, Okurimeta. That is your three in one. Ba? Oh, be maybe okay. Like that. And then when they say these things, some people get really happy and they exhibit it. So when they come home, you know, they want to exhibit it not only on their children, their husbands, their siblings, whoever. They come home with this air. We are calling me. So, we call Jobirini. Nothing. The way they walk, the way they do both work. Could you mean? Yes. And that affects relationship. Is your husband or your spouse the type that wants you to behave that way? It does not matter. Sometimes some men don't mind. In fact, they like it. Why some mind? But if they mind, and you want to continue, what happens? Conflict, right? Then the next one, so that I can move faster. Expressions. After you know your body, you identify with the type of person you think you are, whether you are female. Those who identify themselves as female, who want to do everything feminine. They want to dress like a female, their nails, their body, everything. You know, you see them with our own pretty little You understand? Why those who see themselves as men want to dress like men? And then that will show in your expression how we present ourselves and how society, culture, community, and family perceive and interact with and try to shape us. How many of you have told your daughters not to climb? Don't climb. Don't climb. I just answer. Yes, please don't. Okay, don't climb. Why? Why did you tell her not to climb? Because I think she does not have the stamina to behave so. She's not a boy. And then I said, ah, why did you do that? You will call that you don't have that strength. Physically. I don't I you know I, I because of time I didn't want to I want I didn't want to go into uh, biology, you know, or medical terms. I try to keep this as simple as possible. Yeah, physically. The muscle mass of a man is more than that of a woman. Yes? Um, but climbing is a skill. It's a skill. Climbing is a skill. And when it comes to a skill, it has nothing to do with either a male or a female. It has more to do with technique. Ask a boy and a girl to climb. They might not climb the same way, but I tell you, both of them will climb. The speed of the climbing might not be the same, but both of them will climb. 
But when you tell a girl you cannot climb, she cannot climb, you. she won't climb. Even if she can, it's okay, my mommy said I cannot climb, she will not climb. Just like you tell a boy that you cannot cook. You cannot cook. Get out, what are you doing in the kitchen? Get out of the kitchen, you cannot cook. So he ends up going and, I mean, he will not cook. And when he needs to get married, he gets married because he needs somebody to cook for him. Why are you marrying her? She's such a good cook. Uh -huh. And what again? Well, she's clean. She knows how to take care of the house. Uh -huh. And what again? Um, clothes. And so she's, he's really not telling you what he sees in her as a person. But rather what she can do. There are so many other things. So, Let's move on, please. Media. Please go on, media. Signs of domestic abuse. I'm jumping. What are those signs that you want to begin to see? And the, those signs are red flags. They are red flags. Embarrassment in public, whether people are there or not, they embarrass you, put you down, put down your accomplishments, huh? keeping malice, make you feel like you are unable to make decisions. You call a meeting because you don't need a problem. And you need to take a decision. And then you make suggestions. Instead of, and you all know that this suggestion will work. Instead of your partner saying that, ah, since this suggestion came from mommy and this is fine, you can go with it. You know. Wait, I have to think about it and conclude on this matter. The reason why you need to think about it and conclude. On the matter is because the final thing must come from him or you, depending on who is the dominant partner. Because here I want to talk about both. I don't want us to feel that the men are the problem alone. You know. The women are also the problem. And one is dominant in the family now. Some homes, the women are the dominant partner. While in some homes, the men are the dominant partner. Just as in most homes, the men are the dominant partner. It's in the church, the man is the head of the house, of the home, as Christ is the head of the church. Because that has been written, and we need to follow and obey it, we now pretend. Women pretend to obey their husband, they are not obeying. You know, their head, they are putting their head down but they are looking up. They are putting their head down but they are looking up. or try to gain compliance, tell you that you are nothing without them. You know, when your spouse says that, go back, go lower. Go lower, go lower. Now, I happen to have grown up in a home where I have to have grown up in such homes. Up to the point that my father died, he was still telling my mother that where was she? When he went into the army, that it was because of him that they pulled her out of that village. And now she has been fined. For some of us, we had the privilege of being sent to school by our spouses. But that does not mean that, you know, they should now lord it over you and make you feel little because they sent you to school. For some of us, we are who we are because we were pushed by our spouses to become somebody. But that should not be used to bring you down. So there are so many other signs. signs. This um, presentation will be giving um, 
to you. Please let us go to um, slide 23. Slide 23. I said, let us now explore our reactions to these signs. Some of the signs I mentioned as it plays out in self and group dynamics. How do you react to the sign? When you see the sign that there's something happening in my house, how do you react to it? How? There are different types of reactions. So I give you the mic now, you will talk about it, but because of time, I and mean, I want to give space for questions. I want to go straight into my plan. Reactions. Our reactions to abuse are not static. They are not the same. They change over time. As they evolve, they take new characteristics. You react to what you see today differently. Tomorrow, you react in another way. So abuse moves through different phases and may escalate. Everybody say escalate. Escalate. Give me escalate you. Either you or 
your stance will confront you. At this stage, the conflict becomes has become more open. Occasional fine. You know, because at the pre stage you did not handle it. You did not have there are different ways to handle it. I don't want to talk about it now. Because this topic we are talking about is a topic we teach for a whole semester. A whole semester we teach domestic violence. I mean a violence. Looking at domestic violence as part of violence in society. Relationship between the sides may become very strange. And then after this, without going to crisis period. At this point of this crisis, that is when a lot of people outside will get to know that something is happening. This is the peak of the conflict when there is tension and violence and intense communication will increase. Please let me to the next slide. At the end of the day, you have the outcome. Eventually, the crisis will lead to an outcome. Some people might agree to go to the peace table. But I can't tell everybody maximum. You will not say, okay, we can discuss it like they called me for that discussion. So that they can enter into a peace building process to address your mess needs. Why at that point some people might need to total break up? In Shemo, no matter what you say to them, me in Shemo. So what I want us to take home is that crisis in the home, abuse in the home, don't just start. It has a pre-violence stage, and then it has the outcome. It goes through a process. Tabati, we are all science here. Let us begin to seek help. Seeking help does not mean that you are reporting your spouse. Seeking help does not mean you don't want the marriage anymore. No, that is not true. That is not true. Okay? So, now we move to the next one, and then we'll cross around the post violence stage. However, if the issues and problems are rising from this incompatibility, have not been adequately addressed, this could lead to another circle of tension. So I think here. Can we go to our next slide? Thank you. 
of domestic violence. In most cases, families and other people are affected. Please be their brother and children. We have this myth that uh, children don't know, they don't uh, care, you know, they don't understand, they will not remember. Is it possible if you had a child where they were fighting earlier on? Is it possible for them to forget? No. There was a study we carried out. We went to uh, primary schools. And then we gave them a piece of paper and we told them to draw the relationship between mommy and daddy at home. We visited five primary schools in Ibadu. And out of those five primary schools, we gave those pieces of paper to about 40 primary school students. Out of 40, 31 gave us the drawings of our lives. Relationship between mommy and daddy. One drew the hand, clapping daddy. The other one, pushing. The other one, with the bottle. So many things, yes. Yes. That's relationship between mommy and daddy. That's what they see, and we think they don't see. The children see everything, and they hear everything. And that is why when they are gathered up as children and, you know, playing, you find out that some, some kids are extremely aggressive. The next thing that happens when once there's a problem, they are slapping, they are kicking. Because that's what they see their parents do. They see their parents snap. They see their parents kick. They see their parents shout. And then you see them tell their classmates, shut up. That is what the language they hear, shut up. Teacher will say, sit down. I will not sit down. In fact, one chant that the teacher, I say, I will not sit down. I did it alone. Usually, when I come for programs like this, I come with my bottle for experiment, experimental bottles. I have a bottle of water, plain. I have another one with, with color. And I tell you, that plain one is a child. Born with no violence around. At the moment you keep exposing them to the violence, you put the color in the bottle, you need to contaminate them. You contaminate their thinking, you contaminate their behavior, you contaminate their feeling, you are producing a monster. Even though you have beautiful homes and beautiful furniture, because I'll talk about that. As a whole body of a home for seven years, most of the cases, in female homes, most of the cases I deal with is drug abuse. And these girls will tell me that they tested the drug first of all at home, either through their dad or their mom. Drug abuse. Sometimes lose. I had a girl who would not go home for two years she did not go home. And the photo has reported that this girl did not go home last year, and this year she was also not going home. So I called her. She said, I'm sorry, ma'am. There's no home to go to. Her mom is a judge in Lagos. The father is an engineer in NFPC. They are never at home. They gave birth to two. Two kids. They sent the brother abroad. Very soon they will send her abroad. Are we looking for money? Changing money so much that we don't have time for our children. She said they just send her money. Mommy, do you know that since I came to school, first semester up to now, my mommy has not called me. But I get her and that's all the time. She sends me money. I guess I have no problem with money. But my mom has not called me and she broke down at the My mom, even if my dad was not called her on the top, but my mom has not called me. I was sick twice. I was taken to change me twice. My mom did not call. What did I do? Am I bad? And 
Let me ask a lot of questions. So, children of domestic violence feel guilt and blame. They blame themselves. Sometimes they blame themselves that they are the cause of the violence in the house. They develop phobia. They struggle, bully, and so on and so forth. The effect can be long term, the effect can be short term. So, let me quickly look at the effect by age. An unborn child may be injured in the womb due to physical violence and suffer exposures to drugs if the woman is on drugs. Some of us don't know we are on drugs. We take a lot of our dough, plenty of dough, for one thing or the other. We don't know that our dough is the drug and it also alters some things in our body. An infant baby exposed to violence may have difficulty developing attachment and then also trust. A toddler preschool develop, development may be affected and they suffer from eating and sleeping. A school child, a child, may struggle with child relationship. My friends, you know, they struggle with that. And then, of course, the adolescent. I see more of what domestic violence is to adolescents. A lot. Sorry, ma'am. Allow me to stay. My son is in the Bishop and Director of the United States. If you never felt like that. And you will call me from time to time and tell me in our post I don't know what is happening. But enter, anytime I enter the toilet, the drugs between the toilet is becoming too much. At Jai Kauda University, is our university. I remember when we started, you know, funds for that university, donations for the university. I believe in what it I'm sure some of you donated more than you It's not small money. We're happy that we're going to have our own university. Very happy. I said, no. He said, uh, no. He did go here. Paul said, we'll talk until they come tomorrow. They smoke everything and they have names for it. How many of you know what Mary J is? Mary J is what? You see, you don't know. Mary J is marijuana. Ah. How many of you know what Papa is? Papa? You don't know what Papa is? Okay then. Papa is cocaine. They call it Papa. They have coded names. How many of you know these coded names? You don't know. In your friend and you know. Okay. Coded. You don't know. Because you never had time to have a discussion with them. Some of us never had time to discuss with our children. If that's the only thing I'm able to take away from here today, then I have done something. Please, I beg you, those of you who have young children, you can mend your marriage. You can mend your marriage, but you cannot mend them when you destroy them with violence. You cannot mend them, it's difficult. Because as you're fighting at home, you're having those arguments, you're eating into the fiber of their being. <coughs> you're eating into their fiber, you're destroying their future. You're getting them confused. And if you don't have a relationship with them and you grow up, they get into the hands of some people and they are used as machine mercenaries. Those who carry bones, enter the church and shoot people in church, though they have mothers. They were born as a woman. We need money, we need money, we need money. You cannot drive more than one car at a time. You cannot sleep on more than one bed at a time. You cannot wear one clothes at a time. You cannot wear one shoes at a time. You cannot. When my husband died, I came into the compound and I looked at the compound. And I asked and I said, did he, because I can't do I said, which of these cars in the compound do you want us to marry you? Our 
children to make them better people for the society. But we need to live in truth. A lot of us live in denial. We lie a lot. We just keep lying. We lie to ourselves. We lie to our children. We lie to the society. We lie. We don't keep lying. We just lie, 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 lie. And when we lie, and there's no truth in us, we cannot get anything that you derive from truth.
to be made accountable early. And he told no for a view of a told no yango to be put to order early. But they can only be put to order if you speak up and speak out. The church is asking you to speak out. And let me use uh, the popular social media joke on Jonathan, Jonathan's wife.
our mama for giving me this opportunity. I pray that the Lord will be our hope and that the Christian home will be a point of reference for every home in Nigeria. That they will point to a Christian around and say, look at that Christian, look at their home, look at their children. It used to be like that. We are not going to lose it. Let us bring it back. Let us bring Christ back into our home. The blood of Jesus is crying. Bring me back into your home. Use my blood on your doorstep. Let us call our children back. And the Lord will heal us. Thank you very much. Thank you, God. Our mother is thank you, the nation. And I appreciate God in our lives and ministry. Thank you, man. God bless you. Can we have a dedicated pause? One or two, I think, for a very short period to appreciate our mother. Um, if you need to ask me a question, you will need me to sit down for counseling. I'll give you my number. You can sit down my number. I'll make myself available. My number is on the slide, so if you get the slide, the last, the fourth and the last slide, my number is there. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. What do we do? We don't need for us to have a soft spot. I will, I will, I will give you my number. On behalf of our mama, the president of Women Organization of the Vatican Diocese, our dignity's wives, the canon's wife, the priest and the deacon's wife, and the entire women organization of the Vatican Diocese, we appreciate you, ma'am, for this great lecture, ma'am. We thank you for opening our eyes to some of these things that we thought that we don't know were there before. And we pray that more successes for you in this journey of the work that you are doing. Thank you very much, ma. Eh, the shishenba will be purchasing. Eh, the shishenba. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Ma, I want to thank you. I know that many of us, some of us, if not many, we want to have one-on-one -on -one discussion with you. If I should give a people you know, number to take number, ask questions. Yeah, do to take more time. But I just want to tell us, Ma, because the next lecture is about to take off. I want to tell us that just sight her at that extreme end. One person at a go. Please, the next lecturers are here. They are taking up one talk immediately now. The moment you see her setting down at the back there. One person at a go. The moment you see another person coming, you just stay back until they are done. And not to go out, to just have it. Can you give us like what time is after now? Thank you, man. Thank you, man. God bless you, man. So, man, we are grateful, man. Thank you very much. Let me turn my voice. Thank you, Mama. Let's put our hands together for our sister, Doctor of the and she all know who she wants to do. Please give our time to just sit down for like five, ten minutes before we take our turns to see her. Thank you very much, Mama. We are indeed with you. Now to another empowerment. It is an empowerment, yes. It is a health talk, yes. We have a sense of it.